everyone, welcome to my animal chit chat vlog. Today I will be talking about the ladybird cycle. Now you saw me last time talking about the ladybird's types and conservation and how important it is to help introduce ladybirds into our gardens because they are great at eating all the aphids that eat all our plants. Um, ladybirds are part of the beetle family, just to give you a quick sort of background. So uh, they are part of the order Colopetra, which are exclusively beetles. Um, they some of them do have subgroups, but um, they are known as Colopetra in general beetles. Um, that's just sort of a, a fact I like to ha add on because I'm learning a lot about animal um, insect orders at the moment, and it's absolutely fascinating. So, yeah, and their wings their wings are called. Um, I don't know, uh, the wing cases are parted and they're called uh, ele Electra, which is really interesting. So I just wanted to add a couple of interesting facts there for you. Um, but yeah, today is just basically about the, la the ladybird cycle. Um, so the ladybirds are one of the many insects that do go through a, to a um, full stage of metamorphosis. So they go through a, a full life cycle. A life cycle is sort of insects growing. So it's sort of different to how we grow and um, metamorphosis is just a fancy word for change. So don't worry about it so much. It's just a big fancy word um, just to make things difficult for everybody. Okay. All right. So, um, yeah. So some insects don't complete a full metamorphosis. Um, a full metamorphosis is having four or more stages, normally four to five. Frogs have five stages, my favorite animal, because they have the frog spawn, the tadpole, the sort of froglet, the, sorry, the sort of tadpole turning into a froglet, uh, the small froglet, and then the adult frog. So they have five stages, um, but most have four, and some only have three, like mantises only have sort of the egg, the nymph, and the adult and that's it so they only have three stages um so it's quite interesting to sort of learn about how they grow um i'm sort of obsessed with sort of insects that have got um well you know how they transform and stuff it's amazing especially butterflies i'm going to do a butterfly video soon um i've let most of mine out at the moment some of them are in cocoons and i'm expecting them to hatch but i would love to do some more butterfly stuff because i absolutely suggest it highly as well as but as, as well as ladybirds because actually they 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 do pollinate as well without insects actually this world would probably be a mess and um so many people think oh insects gross bees wasps but actually they do help with um the world and they pollinate and they do more for us than we think so i'm, I'm just really passionate about them and very excited about them so um that's why i'm babbling on about that but let's get to what we talking to you about today talk what we are talking about today so today we are talking about the ladybird life cycle now i have got so to start with i have got some models to show you i'm quite excited about this i must admit it's a little sad i'm a 23 year old woman i'm excited about toy models but it's so exciting because actually it's if you're new to learning about life cycles or ladybirds in general, that it's so exciting to sort of learn about it in a sort of a visual way. I find learning in a visual way for me really helps. Some other people might be different learners, but that's fine. So um, basically, the, the cycle starts when the ladybird comes along and lays eggs on a leaf. So normally the eggs are in a cluster. I actually have some to show you. I don't know if the camera is big enough. Um, I can get a big enough zoom on the camera, but we'll see. But I will basically, what the, what they do is they lay eggs on a leaf, um, normally where a lot of aphids are. So that they're young when they hatch, they eat all the aphids. Um, normally in a big cluster like this, if they are sort of apart, it can be a cause for concern, but not always. Um, sometimes they just lay eggs apart. Um, so after they've mated, um, seven days after usually, or, f or a few more after that, the eggs are laid. So they don't lay eggs straight away after mating. Um, so their eggs, they normally lay on things like bramble, rose, anything that's got aphids on really. Even even things like nettle. I, fa I have found some eggs in nettle. I even found a larvae on nettle. 
and I found loads of aphids. So where the aphids are, ladybird eggs might follow. Not always, because the weather is quite cold at the moment, so it's quite hard to find some. So if you do decide to try and look for some, um, just be aware that actually the weather is quite on and off, because it's cold today and it was hot the other day. And they're confused, you know, they are out from March to October. But actually, I think actually it's been a cold spring, so maybe they are not ready yet to lay eggs. Mine, mine has started, but um, unfortunately, sometimes when they do lay eggs, they do turn sort of a greyish sometimes. But because that's sometimes the, they sort of die inside, um, or either um, they're just infertile eggs, unfortunately, and that's what happens, and you can't stop that, and it's nature, and it is sad. But that's why they lay so many eggs. They're one of the insects that are our selection, meaning they produce more young to ensure their survival. So, yeah, I just want to see if I can show you. Because uh, I had to take some out today, unfortunately, because um, they turned grey. Um, it's sad, but as I said, it happens. Um, I don't know if you can see that. There's a little, li there's little yellow marks. No. They're too small for you to see, but I'll probably take a photo. Um, no. Yeah, they're too small. They're very small in real life. The model's obviously a lot bigger, so you can actually see it. I'll drop my ladybird. Oh, there we go. Um, yeah, obviously, they're a lot smaller in real life. I've, um, there's probably some photos online. Um, on my website, so www.animalchitsy.com. So, um, yeah, so just go on there and um, you will be able to see, um, you will be able to see the true picture of the ladybird eggs. Now, the next stage, after they come out from eggs, they, are, they usually emerge like this. So these are called larvae and um, they are funny things. People do think they're worms and um, are out to ruin um, people's plants. People mistakenly throw them away because they think they are sort of um, pests, but they are actually a ladybird larvae, uh, the second stage of the ladybird metamorphosis. Um, now, <laughs> usually um, they are sort of a black and orange, and they are sort of spiky around the edges. Um, the harlequin ones are. Um, sort of reddish and a lot more spikier. Um, they are hard to tell the difference in this stage though, even if people say they are spikier because they are very similar um, in all aspects and stages. The eggs for um, the harlequins are, are, are also the same. They might be a bit orangey sometimes, but they are pretty much the same as all species of ladybirds. Um, so the next stage after the larvae, so the larvae actually do eat aphids as well. So if you happen to hatch some eggs um, and want to do the conservation project um, like I'm doing, then you will get these. And they are much smaller um, in um, as they come out the eggs, so they're so tiny. But they grow to about one centimetre and they curl up and become this thing, which, oh, there we go, looks something looks a bit like a worm, doesn't it? It's not a worm. It's not a grub. It's actually called a pupa. And a pupa is basically sort of like, you know, when you think of things like um, butterflies, they go into a, a, a sort of like a cocoon. This is their cocoon, basically. And this is them, as, they, um, as they're in this cocoon, they shrink. So they get smaller and they develop in this. And then when they come out the other side, they are obviously the ladybird. Now, ladybirds obviously are not this big. They are much smaller. They are measured in millimetres. So, obviously, they shrink within the pupae. Um, so, you know, the most biggest ladybird, I think, you know, out of the ones that I know of, really, is sort of ten spotted. But there are so many different types. So, I'm not saying it's the biggest, biggest. But, you know, um, they, they're measured in millimetres. The, the smallest is, um, and the most common, is the two spotted ladybird um, sort of measuring from four millimeters to six millimeters? So they, they must really shrink inside the pupae. So it, it's quite interesting. I do like studying life cycles. Um, it's just a quick video there for you. Um, if you want to know more about ladybirds, um, visit the episode one, which is conservation and um, 
I will tell you about more about the different types then. Or if you want to read more about it on my website, www.animaltitsi.com. Um, and also, if you want to follow me on Instagram, see what I'm getting up to in the conservation, the gardening, the butterflies, my frogs, um, see my other videos, then yeah. And don't forget to press that button and subscribe. Thank you very much. Bye.